Dr. Shabir Ali, God talks about paradise and God talks about hellfire. Why the two? They're, they're extremes, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. It, it could be that in, in the stage of, uh, there are stages of religious development, and uh, just as we have stages of physical development and uh, intellectual maturity as well, that there are stages of spiritual development. If we think about intellectual uh, maturity, we, we know that in order to get our children to uh, do things, sometimes you have to offer them rewards and, and sometimes even like taking away their privileges. Uh, so you have a system of reward and, and punishment. But as they grow older, uh, they come to understand for themselves like what's good and bad, what's what's better for them, what's, you know, if they, by the time they get to university level, if they don't understand that they're supposed to study for themselves, not because their parents are watching their backs, uh, then, then they're not going to succeed at university because parents cannot really make them study. So in a similar way, we go through spiritual development where uh, at an earlier stage, uh, um, one just thinks of the reward and punishment. I want to do this prayer because I'm going to get this reward. I want to avoid this sin because if uh, otherwise I'm going to get this punishment. And I can remember that I was at one time just very much like that. Um, uh, and, and maybe to a certain extent I'm still like that. But a lot of people are like that. Like a lot of people think of, of hell or paradise and think, well, I'm, I'm, I don't want to go to hell, you know. Yes. I, I don't want to be punished. Or I want Jenna, a paradise. So that's why I'm doing this. Right. And the Quran also mentions very frequently um, mm -hmm. those two things in different ways, right? You know? Yes. So it mentions so, punishment and reward. The yeah. carrot and stick approach. Yeah, and probably because the, the majority of people are at that level of uh, spiritual development, they're, they're not there yet. Uh, but let me start, speak about the higher level of development. Okay. Uh, at, at one stage, and let's say the pinnacle, if I go to the other extreme, is where it is reported that uh, one of the women mystics in the Islamic tradition, Rabia of Basra, uh, she she is reported to have prayed saying, God, if, if I worshipped you because uh, I'm afraid of hell, uh, then throw me into hell. If I worshipped you because I, I want paradise, then deny me entry into paradise. But if I worshipped you uh, because uh, I sought you, uh, then do not deprive me of you. Uh, so uh, she, her, her goal in worshipping God then was, was God himself. Uh, now, is this reflected in the Quran? Yes. Uh, the Quran, in many passages, uh, speaks about doing good th deeds for the sake of the face of God, uh, or seeking the, the uh, face of God, seeking the, the face of God. So it's like one, uh, just as one wants to see the face of one's beloved, uh, the devotee wants to see the face of God, and one wants to be in the presence of, of God. It is mentioned that uh, the wife of the Pharaoh um, uh, prayed to God uh, saying, uh, God, uh, build me a house with you in paradise. So it's not just simply being in paradise. That's not the goal itself, but being with God uh, in, in paradise, because that's, that's the way to be, to be with God. It's, it's not the paradise itself, but it's to be with God. And uh, a, a verse of the Quran puts it nicely by saying, uh, The pleasure of God is the greatest. So uh, all of the pleasures of paradise and so on will fade by coming comparison, when God announces his pleasure, it is mentioned in the hadith, when God announces his pleasure for the believers and saying, at this day I am pleased with you and I will no longer be displeased with you. So, so that is the ultimate. So uh, that one reaches a stage of spiritual development where one realizes that God is not uh, there to punish people. Uh, he doesn't get any pleasure from punishing. He doesn't get any benefit from that. Uh, there's no reason why he wants to punish people. Uh, he is benevolent. He's kind. He's merciful. He wants to give uh, out of his generosity. Um, and, and that is a being that we should love. It's not a being that we should fear uh, uh, or, or that we should just simply obey because uh, we're afraid of consequences but, uh, or, or that we're just trying to please in order to get some rewards. But uh, that, that is somebody that we're in love with and, and we just want the good pleasure of that person. Uh, so, so that is the uh, state that, that we should eventually get to away from all of this thinking about rewards and punishment. But yes, how, do, how do you think people. we get to that stage? Well, one thing is to, to realize that uh, in, um, in the ancient world, uh, the, uh, there were many despots, and, and this is the life that people were accustomed to. They knew that uh, you know, if they didn't obey the king, the king could, uh, um, they could face dire consequences. Uh, so they had to obey. 
um, when the Quran is giving them a message, the Quran has to compete with all of these uh, different um, allegiances. Uh, do you pay allegiance to the king who might punish you if you don't obey, or do you come and pay attention to God? So the Quran uh, subscribed to that idea of reward and punishment, but the higher calling of the Quran is to come to the pleasure of God and seeking the face of God, seeking God himself. So what about hellfire? Should we be afraid of hellfire? When we come to understand what hellfire is, you, you realize that that's not a place where God is going to put people um, because, uh, you know, the punishments are too dire. They are, they are too extreme to think that God is going to put his servants into the fire. Uh, in fact, there's a hadith uh, in which it is mentioned that the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked his companions, uh, do you think that... Uh, you know, a certain lady who was seen like nursing her baby, do you think this lady would put her child in, in a fire? And they said, no. And he said, so too, God, you know, will not uh, want to put his servants into a fire. So when we realize what the fire is, then we realize that God is not going to do that. But he, he gives these kinds of warnings, uh, and we should take the warnings seriously. Uh, but he puts it in that way for those who will not understand anything different, but to think, okay, if I don't do this, I'm going to be in the fire. Thank you for that interesting answer. I really appreciate it, Dr. Shapiro.